my inner game was there, but I noticed uh, my outer game, kind of some of that shit, kind of faded a bit. So the outer game, one, I remember, because the first time going out again, all of a sudden I'm like, let's go back to Vegas, because it it's like the mecca of the world for pickup shit. So I'm like, let's go, and I'm in the club, and I can hear my voice, and I'm, I'm not loud enough, and I hear it ringing in my ears, and I'm like, why am I not loud enough? Because teaching this, you know when the dude's loud enough when he's not, and I'm hearing it myself, I'm like, fuck. So one of the first things is just like being louder, right? And it, it seems so fucking obvious, but guys, I just see them out, and they're just still not loud enough. Uh, the other thing, I'm just going to say this really quickly, because I say it all over the damn place, is the tonality, too, making sure to keep that downward tone of voice. Everyone know what I'm talking about here? Anyone not know what I'm talking about? Okay, cool. I'll do it real quick because it's all over the internet. Just check out my website or something. Uh, the, you have the, the authoritative commanding tonality. I think I notice it a lot here actually in Australia because Australians, I have a horrible accent, but they always go up at the end when they say everything like this. How do you think about that? And what this is, it's really like it's a triumph for rapport. It's seeking rapport like you want to be their friend or something like that. Instead of like, you, hey, you right here. Yeah, you're looking at me. You like that? Mm, you like being pointed? I'm pointing at you. What's your name? Even when you ask questions, he almost answered it. He was that afraid, right? So like, uh, it's like, I'm that alpha. I'm that fucking alpha. Yeah, you guys feel it? You feel the aura? So it's like, what it does is by you going with that commanding tonality, it, uh, it, it, it conveys a lot of value right from the start. So right, it's like, I had to kind of re-remember that because I'm sitting in my basement or talking to my parents or something. Actually, yeah, that's, so that's the best part about this whole thing is I'm creating this like pickup product in my basement and all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, like LMR, Bust the resistance. And, and my mom's like, what are you talking about down there? <laughs> and I'm like, shit, shit. Because there's something like, yeah, right, you got some explicit shit. I got to, like, throw it all out, right? And I'm like, I, I wait till they go to sleep. And I'm like, oh, it's awesome you guys are sleeping now. Because then you don't hear it. They're like, no, the heat, heat register is right there. And they hear everything as they're sleeping at night. They're like, we have to put a pillow over the register so we don't hear you talking about your pickup shit. <laughs> or whatever the base it. I'm like, this is fucking great, right? Uh, Fuck, what was I even talking about with that? Oh, the, so the tonality, stuff like that. What was I talking about? Forgot it. Go to the authoritative. Authoritative, right from the... Oh, yeah, I was talking about after I came out again. Thank you, thank you very much. So all of a sudden, I got back, uh, starting going to, out to Vegas. The other thing I noticed, one of the first things that kind of dulls down is the windows, right? So this is a big thing on the, like, the weekend programs when you're like one-on-one -on -one or dealing with, dealing with the clients and stuff is because they don't have the reference points for the experience you can kind of see it from the outside and you see them and you're like, okay, that, this girl is down right now. And he's just kind of like, like I had a dude in Brisbane, he's like, high five, high five. And the girl's like, yeah, high five, yeah. And I'm like, dude, quit being the bitch and fucking pull her. He's like, takes out his phone and he's like, you ready to go? She's like, finally, right? He's like, thanks, Brad. <laughs> yeah, like quit this fucking high five bullshit, right? Uh, so it's like you, d you just don't know when that window is. It's, it's just like it's outside, of your, uh, it's outside of your reality, right, to kind of do with that. Um, so I kind of get into some more things. I guess I'll talk about the current trip because that just reminded me of some of the stuff that's been cool. So <laughs> actually, I can't really say this whole thing because I don't want it out on YouTube. But I had an interesting experience with Tyler where uh, we met a girl and some stuff went down, whatever type shit. So all of a sudden, I have like a new reality of what is possible. So I'm going out, and like, I see this girl, and I'm out with my, like, my wing here. I had my assistant on most of the tour. If you guys check out my YouTube videos, he kind of makes little like, cameos. It's like really weird looking dude with like a burly beard and shit. You're like, who the hell is that dude? It's just like my random assistant. He's fucking kick-ass, amazing game. So all of a sudden, we're going up to girls, and I'm like, hey, we share everything. You ever been with two guys before? And she's like, what, what? I'm like, we share everything. And she's like, well, actually, I'm like, no, I'm just joking. What, what? She's like, ah. Oh. And it was, like, it was like crazy because it was like, because these type of things are like in my reality, I'm like, oh, this happens all the time. It's cool. It's normal. All of a sudden, because it is, it's no big deal anymore. I feel it's the same way with like the one night stand or something like that. Like you do it a couple times and then you go out. Like one of the best mindsets I have is just like, yeah, sex is casual. It's a normal thing. Like everyone does it. It's not a big deal. But what happens is, especially when you get into pickup, I know a lot of guys when they get into this shit, it's like the results actually go down because they have all these new doubts and shit, and they're like, oh my God. And the other side of it is you just put so much value on it too. So you're in there and you're like, you're like fuck, this has got to go well. I attended this seminar, this seminar, I, and it needs to prove itself. Like, is it working, is it working, ah. Instead of just being like, yo, dude. Like, what's the, what's the old shit they say where uh, 
Like who, when you're in the bedroom and you're like with the girl, who's the one who's like, yeah, yeah, and the guy's just like, that, that. like who's actually enjoying it more, right? Or if you look like a, at a Cosmo magazine, I don't know what they have over here, some, some sort of like ladies magazine, on the front of it's like, 10 tips on finding your G-spot, or like some shit, it's like right on the cover, but yeah, like we have all this like social conditioning of like, don't be the chauvinistic pig, like you can't do all this shit, like da da but if you really think about it, it's like they want it as much as you do, like they want it more than you do, right? Like, I, I could imagine, like, I see the dudes that are out. I see, like, like, you guys are the fucking, the cool ones. You're the ones that, like, you're conscious enough to work on yourself. You have, like, you know, like, self-development. It takes, like, a lot of pride or to, uh, to get rid of the pride to actually admit to yourself that you can, like, better yourself and everything, right? Whereas most dudes are, like, footballer, I'm a footballer, uh, protein, like, all this shit, right? Like, cool, how, how good of a boyfriend is that? He's, he's like, Bitch, like, fucking do the dishes, make me a sandwich. Uh, whereas, like, me, I'm like, I'm reading, honey. Like, read this book. It'll change your life or something, right? Like, when you, <laughs> whatever. But it's like, I'm such a better, such a better provider. It's a footballer, man. I'm just, actually, I just, he out alpha me at the club, so I'm pissed, right? Uh, but anyway, like, you're actually, you're actually the fucking, the cool dude coming up. And not just the drunk retard who's like, bitch, bitches, bitches, ah. What's up, right? So as you get better at this shit, Right, just get out, you're going in, you're getting comfortable, and you're able to convey yourself kind of authentically there. That's like the fucking rarity, right? Like, think about that. That's the rarity. It's like, how many just like cute, attractive mini skirts are there out there? There's a lot of them, right? Finding the right one, yeah, of course, like I have very specific things I'm looking for, but like women are abundant. The cool dude who's not the drunken retard is actually pretty rare, right? <clears throat> so fucking love that shit, this is self-development. Yeah, motivational. That's what I tell girls, I'm like, I'm a motivational speaker. Self-esteem, <laughs> right? So uh, whatever, getting back to some of the things that I learned on this trip. Like I said, for me, one of the, the biggest realizations I had this year was really the fucking frame control shit. Like just the fucking, whoa, like I can control this frame here. I can control whatever I want. Like, um, I think uh, I read one of the most literally life-changing books I ever read was, uh, it's probably the, definitely the most influential book I've ever read was Jed McKenna's Spiritual Enlightenment, The Dandest Thing. It's not actually the best pickup book because it makes you kind of depressed for a little while. It's very like nihilistic, like there's no meaning to the world, all this type of shit. So I, I mean, read it at your own risk. That's the caveat there. But what he says in there, one of the main things that I noticed, and I talked about this on the, the seminar this weekend, is when you see any other person out there, like you see some dude, you're like, you see me up here and you're like, wow, that dude, he, he has amazing hair and he looks really alpha and shit. He probably ha doesn't have a doubt in the world, right? And I, I actually... I feel, when I look at most people, I'm like, wow, that person looks really put together. But if you actually think about what, what they're thinking internally, like the shit that's going on in most people's heads, and they're like, my dad never loved me. Uh, I got to pay the bills. Uh, like, I don't even want to know what they're like. Uh, indigestion, indigestion. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck are they thinking? I don't know. I don't want to be in that head. I don't want to be in most people's head, right? But you see the out, outside, the costume there, and you're like, wow, they seem really confident and put together. But most people's doubts are like so extreme, like people doubt shit fucking to the extreme, right? You have those too, but it's like not as extreme as most people, the, the average kind of beta person in society. So what you can take away from this, the knowledge of this, is the, the way that I actually define attraction, what it is for me more than anything lately, is just like I don't even care. I just do what I want and I make them do what I want. <laughs> Sounds kind of bad. It's just like, it's like you will be attracted to me. And you just fucking, you assume this shit. It's like, of course, you're a girl. I'm fucking amazing. Be attracted. And she's like, no. I'm like, no. He's attracted. Look at him. He's, look at him. He's all reactive. Yeah, he's loving it. Right? <laughs> so you just, you like, fuck it. Like, this is how it's going to be. Like, this is just how it's going to be. And I, it's like square peg, round hole. Square, square, square right? And, he's, and like, it sounds like a numbers game, but it's really not. It's like people... People want to be led. People want to, like, make the decision. So you're in there. Like, if you think about, like, what is a cold approach, right? Cold approach. Guy, girl, whoever. Let's say I'm just meeting you right now. We're just meeting right here. You don't see me on stage. I'm like, okay, cool. He looks at me and he's like, oh, black shirt. Wow. Interesting. Has he washed that lately? Cool. I'm like, oh, khaki pants. Interesting. And you start pinging off of each other and you're like, how should I respond here? I don't really know this person. I don't know how to, like, interact with him. And one of the two of you are going to make the decision of how the dynamic is going to be. You're just like, okay. Maybe, like, I got some clunky watch, and you're like, damn, that shit looks like a Panera or some shit. It's like, no, actually, it's like, 30, like 300 bucks or some shit. It's a cheap-ass watch. But you think, like, it's a, he's like, oh, man, that dude must be rich. That's what I'm trying to look like. Yeah, I am. 
fucking making it rain and shit, right? Yeah. No. So you see that, and all of a sudden, oh, maybe your eye contact goes a little bit more submissive. And maybe you're like, your tonality, you go a little bit more trying for rapport because you want to make him your friend, so maybe he has some business advice for you. So in that situation, or the example I use in, in the Evolutions product, is maybe he's just deaf. Like, literally, he's just like half deaf. So he's like, what's up, man? And you're like, wow, he's really alpha and loud. And then just because he's deaf, you literally kind of fall into the more beta role or some shit there, right? And you just made that decision. So the same thing is happening when you go out and talk to the girl, right? 